Evening YouTube, it's been about a week or two since I've done a, a video and I thought, well, what better topic to cover at this point than one that's both easy and valuable to the user. Um, and that is discussing KVM. Now, there are a lot of other virtual machine solutions out there other than KVM. Uh, you might have heard of VMware, uh, you might have heard of um, VirtualBox, on other systems you might have heard of let's think uh, Hyper-V uh, what else it might have been uh, Parallels, you might have heard of Parallels if you're on the OS X platform so anyway this isn't about all of those other guys and we could probably go into a bit of a discussion about those in another video but this is about KVM now KVM has an interesting and long history but a, a lot of it being tied basically to Red Hat and uh, Kimu. Now Kimu is an emulator and uh, by an emulator what I mean by that is uh, it's, a, it, it's a piece of software that's able to emulate a, a hardware platform okay in software and the thing about Kimu which is quite unique is that it's able to emulate um, uh, ent entirely different uh, instruction sets for example uh, the ARM instruction set uh, on x86 uh, that's just an example of, uh, you know, the uh, emulation that it's uh, capable of doing. Um, however, some of these uh, capabilities uh, turn out to be quite useful uh, for virtualization, which also has a component of hardware emulation in software, uh, directing those calls um, that might be to the virtualized hardware to the real hardware. But anyway, that's a side note. Um, now, KVM is baked entirely into I shouldn't say entirely, but it's baked into the kernel. There's a, uh, a kernel module, and uh, that uh, on my system is uh, KVM Intel. Uh, there's a KVM AMD uh, module as well, and uh, you'll be able to see if you've got uh, the type of virtualization required. In, ca in this case, I've got VTD on my system. Uh, let's just take a look at uh, what I'm trying to get at anyway. But there'll be a set of uh, PC uh, CPU flags anyway, and um, you can see here you can basically find out whether you have that support. So why don't we go ahead and see, as a matter of an exercise, uh, whether I have that support or not? So we'll just grab that c command here, and it's just parsing uh, proc uh, CPU info here. And uh, you can see that I have the VMX instruction set, which will uh, suit uh, our purposes. If you do not have, um, if you do not have the uh, VMX SVM or uh, this other flag, it basically means that you um, will not be able to use uh, KVM. Uh, the an important note here is that uh, you might actually have to enable virtualization support in your BIOS. So don't don't think all is lost. If you're on a fairly modern platform, there's a pretty good chance that you're going to have the required flags, it's just a matter maybe of enabling virtualization. but again, if you don't have it, then, well, you're not going to get KVM. Anyway, so let's move back to the wiki. Um, now, I like to use uh, Vert Manager, so when it says here apt get ins or apt install these guys, you might want to install Vert Manager as well, that's Vert-Manager. Uh, so when you do that, you'll end up with a GUI. Uh, that you can manage virtual machines uh, out of. Now I'm going to do it using the GUI today, but we will also cover at a later stage how to use um, uh, how to use the command line, how to use Versh, that kind of thing. Uh, but let's uh, continue on anyway, and we'll uh, uh, fire we've we've fired up uh, KVM here uh, on your system. I mean I've set it up so I don't need to, but on your system you may very well need to put in a password to uh, access. Um, uh, connection to um, uh, the libvirt D, which is the d the, uh, the daemon that uh, manages uh, virtual machines in this framework. So, but anyway, we create a new virtual machine. Okay, now I'm going to uh, opt for a Windows 10 virtual machine. Um, so, local install media will be used. You could use these other ones. I've used a network Pixie boot before. That's pretty cool. You can have a Pixie server and uh, use that ISO that's loaded on that Pixie server and run up a, a distro. Uh, you can choose some architecture options. Here there are a whole bunch of other bits and bobs here, but uh, 
The problem is, is if, I, if I don't choose a vaguely similar architecture, so an x86 type, x86 type tar architecture, I'm not going to get the hardware acceleration and hence the speed that I would expect from a KVM. So let's move forward. Now, uh, it's asking me whether I want to use a CD-ROM or a DVD. Now, I do have uh, an image that I've loaded uh, onto, because I, I installed Windows 10 onto the Iron, and uh, the reason for doing that is uh, I'm, I'm going to be studying pretty shortly, and uh, there's a fairly good chance that I'm going to unfortunately get into those sticky situations where I get asked to do something in Windows when I indeed would prefer to do it in um, GNU Plus Linux or FreeBSD. Uh, and I just want to just ease, ease that burden a little bit. Plus, my work does require me to understand uh, how Windows works and uh, how some of the applications in Microsoft Office work at a programmatic level. But anyway, we'll use um, the ISO uh, image here and we're going to automatically detect the operating system. It's already done that, but nonetheless, let's browse to what I actually want, which is this guy here. Okay, and we'll move forward. Now, 4096 it seems pretty reasonable to uh, CPU, so that's the amount of RAM that we're going to use, and this is the number of CPUs, which will correlate to the number of threads that we can simultaneously run at a time. Uh, this computer that I'm running on is a 4770K from Intel, and it just so happens that it has four cores and eight threads. So uh, let's move forward, and it's asking for a 40 gig image. Now at the moment I've got 34 gig. I honestly think that I don't really want to give it that much. I'm hoping I can fit it, fit it in in about or maybe 25 gig. Let's hope for the best, otherwise I'll be restarting this video uh, using a GNU Plus Linux distribution, for example. But let's move forward. Win 10. That's fine. We will customize our configuration before install. We just want to make sure. Uh, in this case, I'm using the BIOS firmware and this particular chipset. Uh, the CPU, I would actually like to copy the host configuration if that's uh, possible. Uh, I could uh, I could change these here, I don't intend to. We want to apply these changes or as we as we see fit. Uh, there's a total host memory and we can change that if we really wanted to. I'm not going to change any of this sort of stuff because I don't actually want the virtual machine to boot up on, uh, um, on each uh, physical machine boot. Uh, there is one other thing that I would probably like to bring your attention to and that is perhaps uh, the display and the video uh, QXL are kind of related to each other. Uh, the RAM, well in future I would like to show you that you can actually adjust the RAM uh, that's allowed for the video uh, the video uh, capability. But anyway, let's go and begin the installation and you can see now that we're starting to uh, get underway but the first thing I'd like to do is, is run in full size full screen mode. So I actually am going to say uh, don't scale this this virtual machine at all and we'll run it in full screen mode. Now you can see this little tab come up here. This little tab is quite useful because you can actually click on that and you can get out of full screen mode nice and easily. But we'll go to full screen now. If I find that this section is going a little bit too long you won't be surprised if I fast forward in some sections. Okay, so we're going to choose English but we're going to choose Australian, it probably uh, English Australian. You you can choose uh, which whichever is suitable for your uh, locale, but we'll just choose Australia for this one. We we'll go next. We we'll go install now. And now again, I'm, I'm not promoting. I don't want to get this idea that I'm promoting Windows 10 or anything like that, uh, because I certainly am not. Uh, you know, I prefer free and open source operating systems, but there comes a time when you might need uh, the capabilities. Now, bear in mind, you you know, this is a normal setup that I'm doing. I'm not going to have 3D accelerated graphics or anything like that. There are ways of doing VGA pass through, but that requires on my machine VTX, and VTX is not a capability that my CPU exposes. Uh, here, we need the product key. Now, I do have a product key, uh, but because this is a temporary install which I will be destroying. Uh, I will not be using a product key in this particular uh, situation. So I'm going to say I don't have a product key, even though I do have a product key, I won't use it for this one. As I say, I'm going to destroy this uh, installation once it's uh, complete. So we're going to choose Windows 10 Pro, which is the one that I am uh, familiar with. You could have chosen these other ones like Windows 10 Home or whatever, depending on your uh, uh, license key. 
uh, custom install we're going to just install we're not trying for an upgrade and we're going to just click next okay we're not going to try and do any new or format or anything like that we're just going to go next and hopefully things start getting underway now a little bit of a gotcha with windows when you're installing that on the iron is if you've got multiple drives installed in the gpt or bios or whatever like that be aware that uh, there can be issues with that and uh, i would take precautions to um, actually detach those drives uh, by the you know by the uh, data connection if you can that's the SATA connection or whatever it is that it, it's using I'd actually remove those if I were you because I've had errors on installation before and I don't mean like data wiping or anything like that although I've heard tell of that I don't know how true that is I uh, can't verify that at all uh, or, or, um, or uh, endorse its uh, veracity or anything that type of thing but what I can certainly say is I've had some interesting errors uh, come up before when I had multiple drives installed. Now fortunately with the virtual machine we don't have that. We have a fairly vanilla environment that it's going to install to and uh, you know as this process gets underway we might get asked a couple of questions it might reboot and that kind of thing and we can expect that we just respond to those things and uh, eventually we'll have our virtual machine on first boot. So I'm going to probably fast forward at this point and we'll get back to it when it starts to ask us some questions. Curiously there, it didn't ask me uh, to provide a more robust password. Yeah. I don't really want to do these. Not true answers, don't care. Obviously not true. I'm just going to turn all these little bits and bobs off. I don't really know for certain how much privacy it will respect, but whatever. This is just basically showing you how to install a typical OS uh, in KVM and to see it through until it boots for the first time. So there you go, you can see that uh, I have a basic desktop and one last setting I'm going to try and attempt to do um, is to change the resolution to a more respectable 1920x1080 uh, resolution. We'll keep that change and that's basically it. I'm not going to go any further into it except to say that uh, it would be very nice if we had the QXL drivers uh, in this install. It uh, might be a little uh, better performing uh, but that's basically how you could do it and uh, you would then be able to use Windows uh, on a uh, GNU Plus Linux system uh, which has a KVM uh, installed. Now of course there are other ways to uh, there are, oh dear, this is a pop-up city but uh, there are of course other ways um, there are other, other ways to uh, to install virtual machines and there are other ways to install uh, you know an alternative operating system uh, on here uh, but uh, suffice to say that uh, you know vert, uh, KVM with libvirt and uh, vert manager are very capable so anyway just to prove the point we will delete those and I will delete 
but we will not delete the ISO because that could be very handy for later and we'll free up that storage. So anyway guys, just to recap, that was using uh, KVM, Type 1 Virtual Machine, uh, which uh, essentially the uh, virtual machine components run on the iron. You get some nice speed there and, uh, and it was ver perfectly capable of running uh, Windows in a virtual machine uh, at full resolution on a GNU Plus Linux system. Alright guys, if you like this video please press that like button. If you'd like to receive more of this content press the subscribe and uh, don't forget uh, to uh, to get uh, notifications, you'll need to press the bell. Uh, anyway, guys, I'll see you later. Bye bye.